How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I thought I'd share a very quick and simple tip you can use to potentially fix the likes of these faults. So this is a vacuum solenoid. It's got a hose that runs from one side and then another one to an actuator. And this here was broken, was broken on off a hose on one side and stuck in the hose on the other side was this. Previous mechanics were working on this, they'd done some damage in the removal, and this part isn't actually available locally. So this is on back order, and I thought this would be a great time to showcase what you could do if you have a little bit of time on your side to repair the likes of these parts. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, the product I'm gonna be using is JB Weld. This is something that needs a lot of time to set. You're gonna to wanna to set it for 24 hours plus after applying it, that is gonna give you the best results. If you're looking for something fast acting, this isn't for you. This takes a long time to cure, but it is one of the strongest stuff I've ever used in repairs. The other tip I have is how you clamp it to keep it in place and what you need to be aware of. So the most important thing is to not block that hole or this is gonna become useless. You wanna make sure that that hole stays clear and what I do with that is you can use the likes of a steel rod and you pop it through and make certain that you have an air gap allowed through the other one is safety pins you can use that you could use drill bits you could use a small allen key a needle should i say or a safety pin so any of those items will make certain that that hole stays nice and free when gluing now when you apply the uh, epoxy or jb weld or whatever glue you put on you then if you're using the clamp like i am would go around the center of the hole and make sure that it's clear. Once you have that done, you can set it. And the clamps I'm gonna be using is uh, a G clamp or a fast acting, a quick release clamp like this. That's a two inch one. You could use a four inch, whatever. Um, this Trojan one that I have here is, is likely gonna be suitable or I'm gonna be using this quick release one. These are very cheap and readily available items to um, have this all set up. So I'm gonna mix the JB Weld, I'm gonna have it all set up, I'm gonna show you what it's like set up, then I'll take you back afterwards when it's all cured and um, show you what it, it's like after it's fixed. So I've mixed it here and I just have a flat screwdriver, a very small one which I'll clean off afterwards. And I have it clamped in the G clamp there or the fast release clamp, should I say, and try and get you a shot. Move that over there. Now I'm just padding the base. If you look up on the top side here, the two ridges, the pipe just needs to be able to get all the way past those two where it has enough grip. And I'm gonna be applying it quite heavy on this area here. So right down to the bottom of it. I'll turn this over now and apply it on the other side. Okay, so that's gonna be the idea. I'm gonna be strengthening the base as much as possible, and then I'll give this plenty of time to cure. And again, that's the clamping setup that I have, which will keep that nice and tight for as long as I need. 
So it's been well over 24 hours now, it's actually closer to 40 hours and this should be well and truly set. So I'm gonna remove it out of this clamp and just assess it and see what it looks like. So now that I have this removed from the clamp, there's only two things that I'm concerned about. Has it secured properly? And is there any issue with the inner or the outer? So what I'd be looking for around here, is there any pinholes that developed which could uh, allow pressure to come out? And has the hole still remained free? And that movement in and out shows me that it's pushing down past further. The JV well stayed on the outside and there is no pinholes here. It's very secure, there's no issues there. This is nice and tight. I don't see any reason why this isn't gonna be a success. And that's just another uh, reason or idea that you can use uh, if you have anything that this application may be suitable for. You have a break in a part that's not uh, readily available or is super expensive, and you wanna save yourself some money, as long as the Electrical components inside of this is still functional. The actual outer casing is now nice and secure. And I'll be able to put this back together in the BMW with no other issues. So right down here is where this unit is located. It slots into that groove down there. There is a vacuum line right here. And then a secondary one that runs off this actuator which works this flap. So on this twin turbo setup, this um, actuator runs down and in there, inside there is a flap that opens and closes based off that. So I'm gonna reseat this in position, connect up the pipe, connect up the electrical connector that's up here, and um, then I'll be able to sit back in the vehicle, clear the faults, and bring it for a test drive and see if we have rectified this issue or not. Electrical connector is back on, so are the hoses, these vacuum lines, and I just have to put the air intake side back, and this is the uh, mass airflow that needs to connect back up afterwards. So I'm gonna set that all up, um, hook it up to the scan tool, monitor some live data, see if that fault code is capable of clearing, and uh, bring it for a road test. Okay, so the vehicle all back together now. I'm gonna flick the ignition on. Ignition is on. I'm gonna check the fault codes, monitoring this um, voltage up in the corner because that's very, very important that that doesn't get too low. Lots of electrical pull on these vehicles when you are doing these types of scans and all the electrical systems are still up in operation. All right, we'll do a smart scan. Hopefully get through this nice and fast. Again, the voltage is always a worry for me. Um, ECM, we have multiple fault codes there. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so let's Okay, we have charging pressure. I'm going to start the vehicle because this is getting a bit low Alrighty So we have on the gateway control we have central fault memory, no control unit, no control unit fault. Then we have, this is the code that kept coming back, charging pr pressure control, high pressure stage cr control deviation, charging pressure to low slash positive control deviation. So that was the main fault. And then we have particular filter system, 
filter subject to high load exhaust back pressure high and um, we'll be able to monitor all this we'll be able to make sure that that's all good bypass valve low pressure compressor activation open circuit so the bypass valve was disconnected so i know why that's on and we're going to be checking to see if the rest is i'm going to save that um i'll put it down as pre-repair it definitely is post repair because i'm going to be hoping all of these clear now So far so good, so far so good. All right, we are in the green, it's road test time. Make sure all the performance is back. If it is, issue is resolved. So road test time. So just on the final road test with this vehicle now, full performance is returned. We have the twin turbo back in action, no drivetrain faults, no codes coming back. I'm monitoring the live data here beside me as I'm doing this test drive and everything is all good. So lots of uh, little tips in this one. If you have come across this problem before, that is definitely something to look for. Go ahead and check to see if you have any um, hoses slash vacuum lines broke in that area or a damaged connector. Um, assess that if you do, or maybe even the boot going around, you have an air intake boot that's close around there. Any of those uh, issues could potentially cause that fault. So it's all rectified now, back together and uh, i'm happy to call this a success now again that repair that i did if i had the part readily available to me it's not something i would have done um this is something that's only done for potentially testing or for yourself so if you wanted to test to see if the rest of the system comes back to life afterwards um or not and it's uh, it's definitely a viable way to do it if the part was readily available or if you're in a, a workshop that uh, offers warranties on all their parts it's not something that you're really going to be getting done so bear that in mind it's not something that a workshop is necessarily going to offer to you and that's completely understandable most of these workshops have warranties in place for all of the repairs that they do uh, it does take a lot of time as well but if you have that time you want to try it you want to potentially save money JB weld and allow 24 plus hours and it's got a great chance as always I appreciate you watching this video I hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I really hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching